Doozy's lesson talks about how there was hope that with the 20th century, humanity would improve, advance, and move past the brutal, the brutal ways of the past. But it actually is the most destructive century in human history. With World War I, World War II, nuclear weapons, and so forth, we killed more people in the 20th century than in any century in human history. And they want to know what are the contributing factors and what do we learn from this? But you know there's a movement that began in the United States of America in the early part of the 20th century called the eugenics movement. And the eugenics movement was based on Darwinism that if we took the best, brightest, and strongest among us and bred them together, then the generations would get stronger and humanity would advance. And if we eliminate from the breeding population the weak, the diseased, the infirmed, the imbeciles among us, then we will improve. And this led in America to forced sterilization, where people were sterilized against their will, hundreds of thousands. Primary place of sterilization, forced sterilization, where it took place, psychiatric hospitals. Psychiatrically ill were sterilized, hundreds of thousands across America, to, 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 to improve the species, to advance us. And this, this, and there were scientific papers written on this. And these authors and scientific papers in America became the basis for the Nazis and their movement for a master race. And then ultimately led to the final solution of killing everybody with inferior genes. Do you see the outcome? If you actually believe the evolutionary theory that the strong survive and they kill the weak, you have no objection against what Hitler did. Mm -hmm. There is no moral objection if you really believe there's no God and simply the strong survive and kill the weak. The only place you can have a platform to stand to criticize Hitler is believing in a creator God who's love. If this is all arbitrary forces randomly happening and then and we advance the species by killing off the weaker then this is Hitler's, Hitler's behavior is the natural outcome of that. And to be celebrated. It's, I mean, if, if you believe in evolution, I mean, if you, if you go down that road, it's to be celebrated. But, so are, are we saying then that it's healthier to believe in God than to not believe in God? Well, it all depends on the God you believe in. <laughs> yes, it does. If you believe in a God who is authoritarian, dictator-like, a punishing God who must be appeased, who has intolerance for de the slightest deviation from his rule, even if you just eat a piece of fruit, he'll kill you. Wow. If that's your view. Then it would lead to the Crusades, the Inquisition, and burning people at the stake who disagree, witch trials, all types of a trial, bur blowing up abortion clinics, and then look at the Muslim extremists today who cut off people's heads because they believe differently. It doesn't have to be a Christian. Any God that you worship who has those methods, you become like, and you commit atrocities. So believing in God isn't better than the evolutionary view if you have the wrong view of God. Amen. And, I, and I said in many places, I'll say it again, there isn't much more dangerous in the world than someone on a mission for God who doesn't know him. True. So the only protection we have is to come back to a true knowledge of God. So the lesson asks us to read Romans 1, 22 and 23. Although they claimed to be wise, they became fools and exchanged the glory of the immortal God for images made to look like mortal man and birds and animals and reptiles. And then they ask, how do we see this manifested today? How do you see this exchanging the truth for God, the truth of God for lies and distortions? And of course, the Bible says when they did this, their minds became dark and depraved and futile. There's a consequence to this. That's the law of worship, design law. By beholding, we become changed. You can't help but be changed by what you would worship. And the Bible is saying here, they exchanged the truth of God for this type of distortion. And the lesson's asking, do we see it happening today? Anybody can shout any examples out about how the truth of God has been replaced in our society today? with other things that people worship. <laughs> Football teams? Do they gather in these great cathedrals and each week and give a donation and, and, uh, and, and scream and, and they wear the colors of their team and, and they identify with and want to become like? And... Hmm. Movie stars? Idols? Don't we call them even idols sometimes? American Idol, remember the show? Okay. <laughs> What about cars or houses or possession or money or power? 
What about a God who requires the blood of a human sacrifice to pay him for the sin so he won't kill you? What about that? Well, here's a quote out of a book called Faith I Live By. One of the founders of the Seventh-day Adventist Church wrote this more than 100 years ago. Thousands have a false conception of God and his attributes. They are as verily serving a false god as were the servants of Baal. Are we worshiping the true God as he is revealed in his word in Christ in nature? Or are we adoring some philosophical idol enshrined in his place? God is a God of truth. Justice and mercy are his attributes of his throne. He is the God of love, of pity, and tender compassion. Thus he is represented in his Son, our Savior. He is a God of patience and long-suffering. If such is the being whom we adore and to whose character we seek to assimilate, we are worshiping the true God. Do you see all these characteristics of benevolence and kindness and love and patience and mercy? He's not an arbitrary, he's not the source of pain, not the source of punishment, doesn't need appeasement, doesn't need wrath taken away. By the way, when you understand wrath and a simple way for you to communicate it to people, does God have anger and wrath towards sin? Do doctors have anger and wrath towards disease? Do doctors want to destroy and eliminate disease? Do they want to destroy and eliminate sick patients? Okay? When we understand this is a condition, as we talked about earlier in class, born in sin, conceived in iniquity, that corrupts God's design and destroys He hates it and he wants to eliminate it, but he doesn't hate the people struggling with it. Never does. But when you make it behavioral, then we hate the people who do the bad deeds. Like that description we read from Friday's lesson. You purposely choose to do these things. 